running which it's a database. Um, so there's MySQL, PostgreSQL, other databases. And they have a different data model. It's very different than the data store in App Engine. Um, and they allow for what's called a join. And the join is the way that you would solve this problem in SQL. So what I did is created a SQLite table. SQLite is a database in a file. So you don't have to install anything. And I found this editor, a DB browser for SQL, which lets you write SQL in your file. And so I created three tables. So in SQL, you have this idea of a table. And a table has data inside of it, but it has a structure. And that structure is just like the structs we've been finding in Go, you have fields. So here's ID, text, user ID, and time. So the idea here is that my tweet uh, it has an ID, that's a unique identifier for the particular tweet. It has text, which is the text of the tweet. It has a user ID, which is who sent the tweet. And it has a time. So that's the same stuff we saw over on our side. Okay? And this is what's called a scheme. It defines the table. A table is like a spreadsheet. It's rows and columns. And these are the columns that I define. Um, I created a table for users. This is just like our profile, ID, username, email. And then I created this table. And this table contains the relationships between the users. I call it user follow, and it defines the relationship between this user is following another user. Okay? So it's a table that only contains two, two numbers. And that, those numbers are defining the relationships between the users in this table. This is how you would structure what we just did in SQL. Okay, using tables. What I'm having more nostalgia. Huh? I'm having some nostalgia. Uh, so if we look at that data, what it looks like is um, inside a user, I have these three users, test, test two, test three, they each have an ID. And then in user follow, I have this relationship. So user one is following user two. So if we look at in here, user one, test is following test two. That's what I have in the relationships there. And then in tweet, I have user one sent Sorry, user two sent this one. Okay. Make sense? So uh, I have a question about translating something in that to schemaless. Um, is now a good time to ask, or should I wait till you're done? I'm, I'm not sure because I don't know the question. Um, so uh, in, in a data store, schemaless, could we just have you know one uh, entity which you know is like relationships and it says you know kind of like follow or following and, and so yes. you, and then you can just pull out the... Yeah, you could create an entity. You could have another entity type just like this. And I talked about that. I created that struct called follow that had the two yeah. properties. That's Would that be a more performant way to do it? Is no. It's, no, wouldn't. And the reason why is you don't have joins. Okay, so the way you query this data using SQL is you use a join. And the way it works is select fields from a table. That we can do with data store. We do that with a get, I say, or a query, right? So this is like projection, but by using star, it's like get everything. And so that's what we're doing in data store. When I say query, I'm saying query from, and I give it a kind, right? Tweet, very similar when I'm saying it's like star from. Um, but this I cannot do in data store. So this is saying, take the tweet table, join it to the user follow table, and this gives me the combined result of the tweet and user follow tables, but it only gives me the results where user ID is equal to the following ID. And then I further take down the results based on the follower. So this is implementing the same kind of query, but it can do so efficiently. It's able to um, use indexes to uh, do these two joins efficiently. Okay. Think of this as, uh, in mathematics, you have two sets and you're computing the intersection between two sets. And that's what you're doing with joins in SQL. So then it could. Yeah. Yep. And so, but I'm using multiple tables, right? I'm not using one table. In data store, you only can do one table. You can't query across the two tables and merge results back. Well, you can, but you have to do it manually. I can't ask, I can't ask the data store to do this for me. I had to go make the 10 queries and merge it in my code, sort it, and then reduce it, right? And so what I'm saying is SQL can do that efficiently, data store cannot. If I want to do it in data store, I have to do it myself. And that's slow because it actually has to make all the calls. Um, 
So this is, this is something we cannot do in data school. We can't do this. And so it makes it challenging because a lot of problems involve joins. Um, and so how do we do those with the data store? Uh, and it turns out, basically what happens is, uh, what's happening with the data store here, what we're running into, the problem we're running into, is most NoSQL databases will have exactly the same problem. If I use Cassandra, if I use Redis, they're all gonna have the same problem. They don't have joins. If they had joins, it would just be SQL. And then you would just use SQL, you'd use MySQL. Um, but they don't, and so you, the, way, the way you have to think about how I structure data on data store is the same way you have to think about it if you use Cassandra or something else, okay? Um, so we, we sort of stumbled into a very general problem, and it's a general problem that a lot of companies are facing, okay? It's a, it's a huge headache. Uh, they start small, and oh, now I'm following 100,000 people and my site doesn't work anymore, okay? So, the question is how can we make it better? So what are, what are things, we talked a little bit about uh, ways we can restructure this data. Um, one would be changing this to followers. If we did that, that would make getting, it, it could make the, getting the, uh, make one of these queries faster, but then the other one slower, okay? So right now, getting the list of people unfollowing is faster, because it's just sitting in the profile. But figuring out my home timeline is slow. And so I could switch it, and now the, the other one might be faster. Um, we could break it up into, like you said, make a separate struct and, and store that as a separate entity. And now if I have 100,000 followers, I can do that, whereas with this approach I can't because I'll run out of space. Okay. Like I did the math, if you have a million, if you're following a million people, that's at least 10 megs of space. That's a huge amount of data to send back over the network. Uh, that's not the so, but if you broke it into separate entities, then you can use the query and only get like 10 at a time or something. Okay, so you can do that efficiently. Um, but then you're gonna have to query for all of those inside of our get home tweets, and that's gonna be slow. So right now I'm doing, say I have, I'm following 10 people um, in here. I'm doing 10 queries. But if I did it the way I just described, I might do 20 queries, because now I have to query for the entities. Whereas before, I'm getting them through the profile, so I get them for free. So there's trade-offs, right, between having to think about it. So can anybody think of ways we can fix those problems? I think of this, sorry, I think of this case, the best way to do it would be to put the followers in the following, even though it's duplicate, right, the duplicate stores, because then you can just query But we can't, we can't, so I think one way to improve this query, the get home tweets, is the issue here is I'm having to run the number of queries based on how many people I'm following. Right. So what if we added to the tweet, so it, in our tweet down here, if we added to it the follower, right? So, where, where is tweet here? So I added to tweets, follow. And so now when I send a tweet, it might have a followers field, and that is going to represent all of the people who that tweet goes to. Okay, actually, that's where I meant to put it. If, oh yeah, so if we put it in there, if we do that, now I can change this to be a single query. Because now I can say query where followers equal and give it a user. Um, and that would give me all the tweets where I'm received that tweet. Make sense? It's not so Where you get that stuff from? So what that means is anytime I send a tweet, I'm gonna to have to get the list of all the people that that tweet goes to and stuff it into the tweet and then save it with it. And then when I query it, I can query it very quickly. Okay. Yeah. But, but that doesn't give you the same implementation Twitter has. No. Well, but listen, what happens if I do that? What's the downside there? You, you don't get tweets before you started following somebody? Yes. What if I follow somebody after the fact up there or I send the tweet? I have to update all of the tweets that person has ever sent and add myself to the list of followers. That's easy. <laughs> That's not going to work. Or what if I have 60 billion followers? 
I can't score 60 million people with every single tweet. That's not going to work either. So um, that would fix our problem, but it would do so at great cost to us. Uh, and so that's not, not going to work. So I'll, I'll tell you how Twitter does it, because this is not a secret. Um, there's a blog called High Scalability, which has some fun articles on it. And two years ago, somebody posted about how Twitter, how their architecture is set up. And so um, at, the, at the time, they had 150 million active users. They're more like 200 something now. Uh, and then this is queries per second, 300,000 queries per second. That's a lot. Uh, and then just the data, just the tweets alone is 20 megabytes per second. It's constant, just all the time. Um, and so how do they structure the data? Because that is not that unusual to have one person with 60 million followers on Twitter. That actually happens a lot. Uh, we saw it with Justin Bieber, right? Um, and so, that, so how do they build it? Well, the basic idea is that they do a lot of duplication of data. A lot. And what they have done is they make it so that they store everybody's timeline uh, separately. So what happens is, uh, you know, you send a tweet, tweet, you have 60 million followers. Um, what happens is there's a process where there's something that goes and finds all these followers. And each of these followers, so let's say we have uh, F1, F2, F3, has a list. Okay? And this list has every tweet ID they're receiving. And so there's a, there's a system that copies. So what this is doing is copy tweet ID into this list, OK? Sorry, that's cool. Um, so F1 now has, so if we call this uh, 1234, then now he gets 1234, and F2 gets 1234. And so inside of a system in Twitter, there is a data store. Redis, for example, that's, that has all these lists. So every single user has this list of all of the tweets in their home timeline. And then when we want to query the home timeline, we can do it very quickly, because I just get the list of the tweets, and then I go get the text for the tweet, which I can do quickly, uh, because I'm only showing 10 at a time or something. Um, so I do the 10 queries to get the tweet text. But to get those, the which 10 tweets to get, I can do very quickly, because that's stored in memory. Okay. So every user has a list of the tweets that should be on there. I That's know. right. A list of the 800 most recent tweets on their home timeline. Every single user. Every single user. user. A the massive ideas. cluster of Redis machines yeah. that's all stored in memory. And these are all in order. Yeah, and constantly changing. And so what they have done is they've traded time at query, so they made their query time very fast, for time at write. So now sending a tweet is this huge process, right, where it's like, okay, I write a tweet to the database, that's one thing. Now I copy that tweet ID into 60 million lists, okay? And that takes a while, but they have a lot of machines doing this, so they're able to break it up and have, you know, dozens of machines working on it, chugging away. Um, Every time Justin Bieber tweets, it costs him a dollar. That's, yeah, it's, it's a significant, you know, having the 60 million followers is a significant cost to them, right, because it creates so much more work. But, uh, um, does anybody follow the basic idea of what they're doing, though? Well, what happens if everybody with 60 million followers tweets at the same time? Yeah, well, there can be a delay in how long it takes for that tweet to show up on somebody's timeline. Uh, that's, but that's not a big deal. You reload the page, and, and that tweet's slightly out of order. You know? uh, yeah, so there could be a little bit of delay. They, they say in here five seconds. You, uh, your page still loads quickly. Beaver's tweet <laughs> might not be there because it went in slow. I'll show up the next time February 2nd, you get a tweet, Justin Bieber, Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you're talking seconds. That's how long it takes to show up. Um, <clears throat> that's because they have thousands of machines struggling away on this, okay? Um, so, yeah, here, the home timeline is in the Reddit cluster 800 inches long. Um, so, actually, what I'm saying is uh, what they're doing, you think there's going to be some clever solution to this problem? There's not. They're doing the dumb thing with a lot of hardware. Okay. Uh, so, and if this, you wanted to scale to make Twitter code scalable, you'd have to add all this. And this, I mean, you can't blame Ruby. This happened with the switch to Scala, so 
a lot of it was Ruby, a lot of it was architecture for a much smaller thing. Yeah, so, so, this, so is, this is as big a deal as, as Ruby for Ruby on Rails. Yeah, so they started with a Rails app that used SQL. So it's the argument would go, okay, so the data store makes uh, doing this really stinking hard. Why don't we just use SQL? I can just do a join. And that's where they started. And the issue is that you hit a certain point with SQL. And now you can't get the performance out of it. And that's what happened famously with Twitter. Now they were using Rails too, which didn't help Ruby on Rails. And every week their site would go down. It was broken all the time. And so they had to transition all of their code from Ruby on Rails to Scala, which is a compiled language on top of Java and virtual machine. Um, I thought and, it was fun. <laughs> no, and rewrite it all so it didn't use the database anymore. It used a, a NoSQL database. Uh, so, That there are no easy solutions to this problem. That's guess the point I'm trying to make, is that it just requires a lot of churning away on the data. Um, which you can do, you can always throw more hardware at the problem, and that'll get you pretty far. Um, any questions about? Um, what if, at the beginning, when you started up, you would run drone routines to match up users to their followers in the background? setting up kind of like a join with what SQL would do, yep. but it would be in a no SQL database that you're using Go routines. And then you would call them a channel. I'm sorry, is this your third week programming? <laughs> yes. How do you ask such a good question? <laughs> they call it a process called fan out. So you have in your, uh, your front end, you get a tweet, and then this is going to break into multiple machines, okay? And maybe the machine over here is say, I'm responsible for people A to, I don't know, G. And then it says, I'm responsible for, you know, H to whatever, T or something. Um, and then U to, this is obviously not a good distribution. But the, the point is that you, now, now you have three machines. They split up the work. So the tweets from these users, and then they split up again, right? And Here's the A box, and here's the B box, and, and they keep doing this, okay? Um, you, each layer is bigger and bigger and bigger until you finally get to a small enough thing that one box can keep up with the traffic, okay? Because what you described of one machine would never be able to do. Because I'm getting thousands of tweets every single second, and each one of those tweets I have to look up 60 million people for and figure out how to get it to them. One machine can't do that. So I need lots of machines to do that. One machine maybe could do a million. Maybe he could keep up with a million. And so we get, if we can have 60 machines, then we could do 60 million, right? That's the idea. Um, but in order to do that, we have to fan out each layer. It's doing more and more. Okay. How many tweets a second? Uh, so in this one, they talk about um, Yeah, it's, it's like, uh, it's thousands. I think they talk about 6,000. Um, it's not constant. Yeah, yeah, it's just about where you're at. It's a lot. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's a lot. So, But they have vastly more people looking at the timelines than they do have people tweeting. Mm -hmm. And so they have optimized the looking at your timeline. Um, and they've optimized a very specific use case. Looking at your timeline to see recent tweets. If you go back a month and look at the tweets from a month ago, that's a different process entirely, but that's not what most people are doing. So they don't have to make that as fast, right? They can make that slower. Um, and people are willing to come to do that. So anyway, challenging problem. We're not going to do that. We're going to make it dumb, and it's going to be good enough. Um, so we did it the dumb way, and it works, OK? So if you put in 1,000 followers, our system breaks. It isn't going to work anymore. And we're just going to leave. We could add all the caching and the crazy fan out and stuff to fix it, but we're not going to do it. It's in the, in the outline. Um, and like I said, it's all from this. Like, I didn't tell you anything secret. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you anything secret. Uh, okay. So let's take a five minute break.